Uh, good morning. My name is Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and this is our, our beautiful wildlife ambassador. Her name is Helen. She hatched, and I have to refer to my notes here. Uh, oh, sweet girl. Okay. That's the date of transfer. The date of hatch is um, 2018, and it would, would have been um, May of the end of May 2018. I don't have the exact date. Uh, she came from a captive breeding program, and there's my girl. She came from a captive breeding program, and because of her disabilities, uh, she couldn't be put back in the wild, nor, nor could she be. Uh, used for falconry, so she became a wildlife ambassador. So it would have been uh, May of 2018 is is when she hatched. The date that I that I received her that she became officially a wildlife ambassador for the Southwest Wildlife Foundation is um, uh, July 28th, 2019. The name for this is a peregrine falcon, and uh, that's what most people know know them as. Uh, and she is. There's a lot of different peregrine falcons around the world, and, and she's a North American variety that we call the Anatom uh, peregrine falcon. Her scientific name is Falco peregrinus, which which is the uh, it, it uh, means the gentle falcon. Basically, she's in the in the group with all falco, which is all of the different falcons from the little the little tiny kestrel falcon, all all the way up to the largest falcon in the world, which is the deer falcon. Her weight is about, uh, let's see, let's say ounces. That'll be a little easier for people to understand. Her weight in ounces is about, uh, about 27, 28 ounces. Her wing spans uh, two, two and a half feet. Her diet is primarily birds. Though she does eat rodents as well, and so we we order in frozen quail, rats, and mice, and and then she does. Uh, I do have pigeon breeders that when they call their pigeon flocks, they donate the pigeons for for the wildlife, and so she does get pigeon as well. Activities are very limited for her, unfortunately. Uh, usually, when we have a, a, a one of our wildlife ambassadors, they're also my falconry bird, and so they get a chance to fly free. The hunting season is September through February, so they get to fly free and go hunting like a wild falcon does. Unfortunately, because of her uh, vision problem, she's not completely blind, but she's mostly blind. Uh, we can't allow her to fly because she can only see about six feet ahead of her, and so she would basically run into walls. Uh, she, as soon as she took off, she would lose sight of me, and she couldn't couldn't find her way back, and so she cannot be allowed to fly. So her her mostly her her daily activities is just kind of hanging around with me. She does love in the evening times when we're relaxing uh, here in my living room, and uh, you know we've, we've got the television on. She loves to watch TV. She likes to watch the movements and the lights and the colors, and and so she spends uh, uh, quite a bit of time up here. Uh, you know, sitting in the recliner chair with me watching television to just to get lots of stimulation. Uh, and uh, and then she she travels with us as a wildlife ambassador. So she gets to meet um, thousands and thousands of people every year and and help educate. So it's it's mostly she is uh, a wildlife ambassador, mostly sedentary, unfortunately. But that's the best we can hope for because of her, her poor vision. The peregrine falcon is has one of the best temperaments of, of the large falcons, and that's why it's falco peregrinus, the gentle falcon. And, and she does have a, a real a sweet personality to her. 
Uh, you can see she's be being kind of bouncy because she wants to go uh, play, and she knows that we're. This is not not her normal time time of the evening when she, when we sit and watch television together, and so she, it's out of her routine. Uh, but as as far as an animal to work with, uh, she's very quiet, and and she's very polite, and just just a, a real pleasure to to have. And she does uh, because of her really calm disposition. She, you know her uh, uh, school programs and scout programs as a wildlife ambassador. She's perfect for. Peregrine falcons, uh, just like just like anybody else, uh, you have some that are that are more high strung. You have some more that are laid back. You have some uh, that um, are more aggressive for hunting. You have some that are less aggressive for hunting. Uh, and and so, you know, they they each of these animals uh, have their own individual personalities. And, and um, but as as far as falcons go. Um, Generally speaking, the peregrine is certainly one of the nicest ones to work with. Uh, the prairie falcon, which is a falcon that I truly love to work with, um, they are they are incredibly aggressive and they have a very nervous uh, kind of a temperament, and they're much more difficult to work with. Uh, and, and so, again, like I said, the peregrine is, is uh, even though she's being a little bouncy today, one of the calmer and and easier ones to handle. I got a phone call from a breeder who breeds peregrine falcons, and uh, and he uh, called and asked me if, if I have a need for a, another falcon for for my educational programs. And at the time, I said no, I you know don't need another falcon. And he says, well, I've got this peregrine. Uh, you know, she's a young one. Uh, she's uh, mostly blind. Uh, we we can't do anything with her. Uh, we're you know, we're just, uh, we can't release her. We can't, she can't go for falconry. She can't be used as a breeder. There's really nothing I can do with her. And, and so I guess he says, I guess, I guess I'll just have to euthanize her. And so I told him, he says, you know, bring her over. Let me look at her. And so he brought her over to me and she's really quite beautiful. She's a pretty little thing. And she's got a few little, a little uh, genetic uh, thing. She's got a, a feather here that's out of place. Uh, she's got a talon that instead of turning down, right there that turns up which is that's supposed to turn down because that's actually completely worthless because she can't grab with it and because and then again because of her uh, uh very very nearsightedness that she's nearly blind you know she you know she has no value in the wild at all in fact in the wild she, she would have never left the nest she would never survive um so they he brought her over and she was a pretty little thing and, and a quiet little thing and i says okay let me uh let me contact the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources and get her added to my permits because I have to have, you know, each bird has its, has its own accompanying documentation. And that's what this is right here. Uh, every one of my birds, uh, uh, everywhere that we travel, we have to have this piece of paper with us. And I know it's, you can't read it, but that's okay. You don't need to. But this basically documents... Uh, you know the age of the bird, where it came from, its band numbers. Uh, you know the documentation to prove that the bird is is legally possessed because these are uh, these were an endangered species uh, and and highly protected. So with that, with all of the proper documentation, so when I travel around the country and do my and do my wildlife shows, if if a, a game warden or a fish and wildlife service agent walks up to me and says, "I need to see your documentation." Then I've got a, a basically a, a an envelope full of all of my state and federal permits that that'll um, that I can say here you go and here's here and so this allows them to 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 prove that the bird is is uh, who I say it is and and that I'm doing this uh, in a very legal way. You know, she she does like to, as far as activities are concerned, um, the TV. Like I said, the because of her really poor vision, most birds the TV is kind of agitates them because there's so much movement and and stuff, and they have to get used to the television. But she she'll kind of watch the TV because all she sees is kind of kind of blurs and colors and those kinds of things, and so she does get entertained by watching the television. 
Uh, she does really enjoy her personal time, just just kind of her and I kind of sitting down and, and visiting together. She, you know, the, and because again, vision so bad, you know, the sound of my voice is very comforting to her. Uh, when she's out uh, in her chamber out in the yard, um, you know, she, when she hears strangers, she gets a little bit nervous. But when she hears my voice, she calms down. Uh, and so she she really likes likes to, the sound of my voice. And as far as food is concerned, you know, food is um, is a survival thing. It's not really a treat. Uh, and so she gets, um, you know, all the all the quail and mice and pigeons that she could possibly want to eat. I mean, she's really quite a chubby little girl uh, because you know she doesn't uh, doesn't have to to hunt, and so she gets all all that she wants. So she's just kind of a, a pretty little couch potato. In the wild, uh, a peregrine falcon like this, you would average about seven to 10 years. Um, but in captivity, we can double that. We can go 15 to 20 years in captivity. And and I've um, seen uh, peregrine falcons uh, in, in captivity you know, go 25, you know, even close to 30 years in captivity. But averagely, uh, 20 years would be probably uh, a captive paranoid. It would probably be about average.